Nobody is more hated than he who speaks the truth. And why is that? Because so many people are living in the darkness. They're living a lie. When you embody that authenticity, understand that authenticity is one of the highest vibrational states, meaning you speak the truth and you believe what you say. When you embody that kind of energy to people who are constantly lying to themselves, to people who are living in the darkness, to people who are in denial of the truth, it irritates the hell out of them. Your presence drives them fucking insane because they can't stand to be in the presence of somebody who lives and speaks their truth. And so what they'll do, you'll speak the truth or you'll embody that kind of energy. It'll sting. It'll make them extremely uncomfortable. And instead of taking accountability, like, damn, I needed that or I needed to hear that or I need that kind of energy, they'll project that negativity back onto you because they're not accountable for themselves. They're in denial of the truth. And so that realness that you embody is going to repel a whole lot of individuals who are living in the darkness and that's totally fine because the more authentic and the more real that you are the smaller your circle is going to be but you will draw on the right kinds of people the right kinds of connections who operate in that same vibration and authenticity real attracts real but I just wanted to point out the angle Okay, they're at an altitude with their telescope at 26, direction east, or 98 degrees, in Perth. In Hawaii, they're south-southwest at 204 degrees with an elevation of 45 degrees. So in essence, they're pointed in opposition or toward each other. This observation from San Diego, direction 233 degrees or southwest, altitude 13 degrees. Now, I'll show you time and date claiming that it rotates. The moon itself rotates. Well, it doesn't really rotate. It's called libration. You can see that over at the LRO Animation Studio, they call it, on YouTube for NASA, or the NASHOLES, the liars of this ball earth model. Non-critically thinking, uh, globe-tarred Earth apologists claim that this is exactly what we should see when I showed the rotation symmetrical from these two locations at the exact same time. I want to impress upon you, the viewer, how if you move this over here, that's at the maximum eclipse. Now look, we're at the same moment in time, yet according to the model we're given, the eclipse path moves from west to east, but not all the time. There are eclipse paths that go the other way. I don't tell you many of those stories. They're out there. I've showed it in a previous video. But that, again, is a little truth nugget that would belie this model. And here's another one for you. Why is it that you can see the event occur at the same exact time when it happens to be the lunar eclipse, but here when this total solar eclipse happens, said to be the moon that's covering it, out here in the west it already occurred. And it's yet to occur here in Houston at the exact same time when the whole thing appears to be reversed, meaning the bite on the limb is over here on the right and over here on the left of this one. Again, another contradiction that belies the story we're told to believe in. They wanted to point out, well, the total eclipse had already occurred here and had yet to occur here so that's exactly what we'd expect to see on ball earth problem with that is when you look at the total lunar eclipse considering you know it's the moon supposedly creating both of these observations they don't occur at different times all of this occurs at the exact same moment in time only different times occur when it's the opposite of the solar eclipse. So, again, common sense question, how could it be the moon causing it if you don't have a delayed 
observation at different points on the Earth during the total lunar eclipse. It all happens at the same time here. Just a question for you folks. Wake up from the lies. But first, Graham, you were mentioning something about the orientation of Earth's shadow. Right. As we look at the two images that we have on our screens at the moment, our main image from Perth and uh, the smaller image in the top right from the Starry Nights in Hawaii, uh, we can see that these two images do look quite different. Um, and uh, of course, an important thing with a lunar eclipse is that everybody on the nighttime side of the Earth is watching exactly the same eclipse at exactly the same time. Everybody's looking at the same side of the moon and everybody's looking at the Earth's shadow moving across the face of the moon in the same way. But there are differences in how it, in how it, in how it appears on our screen. A big difference there is, is the orientation and where that bright half of the moon is. Um, as seen from Hawaii, it's the top half of the moon that is bright. As seen from Perth, it's the left-hand side of the moon that's bright. Uh, again, we are looking at exactly the same moon and exactly the same shadow, but we're just looking at it from a different angle. Um, there are two things going on. Um, Hawaii is in the northern hemisphere. Perth is in the southern hemisphere. So that is giving us uh, a different uh, orientation of looking at the moon. Also in Perth, uh, the moon has recently risen, whereas in Hawaii, the moon is, is much more overhead. And as the moon moves across the sky, it appears to rotate in the sky as it moves from one horizon to the other. So that is also affecting the, the angle of the shadow as it appears um, on, on the moon's face. So that's why these images um, are looking different, but we are all watching the same thing in the sky. Okay, there we go, yes. And you see the shadow coming from a completely different direction. And there we go, right. Now you might be thinking what's going on here because this looks like, this looks like a completely, a completely different thing we're looking at because mm -hmm. uh, yes, the, um, here, the, 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 uh, the dark shadow is, uh, is coming across the face of the moon from, uh, from the, uh, from the other direction, um, because everybody is seeing exactly the same event um, here. Um, this eclipse is playing out on the surface of the moon. And as we all look at it, we're all seeing exactly the same eclipse at exactly the same time. The difference is we're looking at the moon in different ways. We're looking at uh, at the moon with different orientations. Mm. So Santorini in Greece in the northern hemisphere is seeing the moon one way around. If we go south, if we go across the equator, we go down to South Africa, the moon is turning upside down. So um, as, as we look at the face mm -hmm. of the moon, um, the position of the shadow is changing as well. If Perth comes uh, if, if Perth uh, gets uh, gets Better some weather. clear sky at, at some point, um, we'll see again a different orientation mm. there because mm. it's not only which hemisphere you're in; it's uh, it's whether the moon is is rising or setting because the moon also rotates and turns in the sky as it moves across the sky during the course of the night. So, and I can ask you, Nas, if you can get the if you can get the Santorini moon up above me here on the screen so we can actually compare the different angles that the shadow comes in through let's see if he uh, can do that on the, oh he's good he got it on the fly oh, how about that yeah so here we have what they look almost like like mirror images uh i want to go over what uh some might call lunar rotation really libration where it seems to rotate but only a little bit over the course of days if you, will, you see this again you see it rotating from one to the other uh, Graham tried to use that as the excuse why it 
piers different from, say, Johannesburg to Perth. Now, in order to help break through any of the cognitive dissonance that might be occurring in the diehard curveball earth believer's mind at this point, I'll interject a little truth here. They always claim, your model doesn't match observations. All the observations match my model. Well, yes, because your model relies on a mathematical construct that doesn't match reality. That's why they always show it to you in a cartoon format. And they omit different pieces that don't fit the story that they're telling you at that particular moment in time. Case in point, they're showing you where the moon is in relation to this umbra shadow. That's what this circle is. This circle is the penumbra. This is the umbra. So at this location in Hawaii, they're saying that it should be coming out of this part of the umbra. While over here in Green Valley, Arizona, it should be coming out at the top of the umbra shadow. And similar at the exact same time, I've synced up all the times with regard to this particular total lunar eclipse in Australia, it's coming out of the umbra at the bottom of the shadow. See, North America, the top of the shadow. South America, the bottom of the umbra shadow. Again, they're omitting a fact that this whole thing is occurring a quarter million miles out in space. And here, when they want you to think of the distant that it's at, they show you this cartoon, meaning everyone should be seeing it right here at the top of the circle. Again, this dashed line is the ecliptic plane. Okay, so if you're looking out far out into space a quarter million miles, it should all be occurring at the top of the circle. It shouldn't be coming off the bottom of the umber in Australia, down here, and then over here in Hawaii, it's coming off over here. In Arizona, right here, it's coming off at the top. How does that happen, curveball earth believer? Wake up from the lies. Now, before all you curveballers get to type it on your keyboard about how I'm crazy, because in reality, they're upside down. They're south of the equator over here versus all that stuff in North America. That's why it's reversed. It's not really reversed. Bump the brakes on that helio ball crap and let me show you what occurred in the south at Perth and Johannesburg on 2018. Again, both south of the equator. As you can see, time and date, this is Johannesburg, 1855 UTC, below it, 855, that's local time in Johannesburg. Just so you know, they're exactly linked up. Look at the uh, altitude and direction. 4491 up here. And on your animation, 4491. And up in the top right, we've got Perth, Australia. Altitude, 52.75. Direction, 280. Down here, so you know it's exact same time. This is local time, 256. We've got 52 and 280. Again, the moon had to be in between these two points, giving this one's looking west, this one's looking east, to observe this right here, as seen at these two observatories. Now, the thing that makes this absurd and your model is blown and ridiculous, if it's a quarter million miles out in space, why would it come on a different limb of the umbra shadow? It should both happen at the same place, given we're in the southern hemisphere. It shouldn't rotate. How big is the Earth? Think about this in terms of parallax. Objects that are further away move less. How far are these two places apart, Earth and Johannesburg? Wake up, curveballers. Allow me to completely deflate your ball earth BS story that you 
diehard curveballers want to believe unto death. Just as the Bible said, they'd rather believe the lie than the truth. Again, as I stated before you started telling me about people being upside down in the southern hemisphere, again, let me show you the map that they claim occurs. Again, the dashed line ecliptic plane, July 27th, total lunar eclipse on 2018, going right through the center. So it should only come off on this side of the umber or that side of the umber, not the up or down. It's dead center path because this is the longest eclipse in the century for the lunar eclipse, according to your model. Again, as I've always said, the lies are in the details. Look here, curveballers. Both Southern Hemisphere, Perth, Johannesburg. That's what they're showing here. Perth, why is it rotated? Oh, uh, that's because they rotated the telescope wrong. It's not right. Oh, really? Look here, curveballer. It's the same as your animation, so I guess the telescope ain't crooked. It's aligned to the horizon. That's what anyone standing on the ball earth would have looked up and saw at the same moment in time. I've got them all lined up for you. You disbelieving ballers. Where's this one coming out of the umber? On the top side. But we're on a ball earth and this is all southern hemisphere. How can it be rotated? This one's coming off at the top of the umber? This one at the bottom of the umber? Huh. While attempting to reason with some curveball earth believers, get triggered. And you mentioned the very fact that uh, some of the models earth information is incongruent. And that part of the story that doesn't coalesce with the argument, they omit. They never give you the story in its collective. So this fellow writes back, fine, show me your model that successfully predicts the time and azimuth of the sun at sunrise and sunset, which works for any location on flat earth at any time of the year. Well, the Gleason's map was patented as a time calculator, so there's your proof of that. Anyhow, then he states, then at the same model to explain how observers in Australia, South Africa, and Argentina can look south at the same time and see the same stars. Show you examples of anomalies that belie your model when seeing the total lunar eclipse from Australia compared to South Africa, Johannesburg. In this area around the south, your eclipse model states the paths move west to east because that's the direction of the moon and the moon is blocking the sun. Although in this region, the paths are sometimes going from east to west. And this particular fellow has been asked numerous times, explain that, and he can't. These are facts that belie your model, but yet again, he wants to ignore those fallacies and bound on with something like, once you can do that, we can talk about a model that works for every situation. Your desperate attempts to disprove the globe do nothing to support your flat earth hypothesis. To do so, you need to provide some evidence to support the flat earth, such as a working model. No, sir. The scientific method is based off repeatable observations, not a clever story or a mathematical construct. Because anyone that can do trigonometry, uh, and tell you that if you maintain the same aspect ratio with your magical space balls, you can move them in and out at will and change the size, and everything mathematically will still work. That doesn't mean it's true. We cannot independently check the validity of the size and distance of the moon. But as I've stated before, it's like the truth in these so-called fictional stories, 1984, for example, where it said they move the stars in and out how they need them. In reality, the prime mover in your three-card Monty magical space ball story is the moon. 
That's the one, the prime mover. That's the one they move in and out when they need it to be. This curveballer wanted to act like he didn't know this. And, and that's the problem. They don't even know their own details of their all their story that prove it false. They don't know these details. So allow me to show some of you folks. Uh, right here on 1982, July 20th. But no, the particular solar eclipse of this one here in, in July is preceded two weeks earlier by a total lunar eclipse. Again, this one here, I think, is in December of the same year. Uh, yes, and the total lunar eclipse is preceded two weeks earlier by a partial solar eclipse. When you see something from the asshole animation studio of the showing the lunar libration, they don't ever show you the five degree uh, tilt of its orbit. That happens every month. Above and below, it moves in the sky. It traces out the figure eight every month. It takes the sun a year to do that. And again, it's going from, what is it, apogee to perigee in as little as two weeks. That would create a situation where you would not see libration. You would see some of that dark side of the ball moon, if you will, if it were moving like. They claim it. They show you a concentric circle because these different factoids would belie their model. So they omit them. I've often told curveballers that uh, my model is the Bible. And they just, you know, poo-poo that and act like you're uh, silly. But they don't know the different facts that are held in the Bible. And I beheld. When he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. That's a description of a total solar eclipse. But the moon turns red. It's not near the sun. So, as we've stated before, the sign of Jonah is when the solar eclipses began. Okay? And that is not the moon that's causing it according to scripture. I oftentimes get worked up when I uh, converse with people that I'm trying to show the truth to regarding our lying ball earth model. So I get a little long-winded in these replies, but there's a lot of good truthful evidence that uh, probably goes on deaf ears. So if you all want to pause this and... Uh, read these things. I couldn't include them in this video. I will uh, attempt to go over many of them, though. I did want to get to the point of the message content here that applies to his particular questioning. Every time he gets cornered, brings this up. This current email, you want me to discuss how everything works on flat earth? Simple answer is, I don't know. I'm sure the sky has a molten looking glass, like scripture says, and that would explain how you can create a rainbow inside with a mirror, and how sun dogs work, and allow for things like air pressure to occur, and the rotation we see during eclipses, and is proof the moon isn't 400 times closer than the sun, because the sunspots rotated in sync with the moon, a.k.a. dark orb. You want to know how the sun moves over the flat earth? Read the book of Enoch, chapter 84, I think. Or look at the Gleason's map. He explains how it happens, and it makes a hell of a lot more sense than a tilted ball that is almost 400 times the size of the ball earth closer when I'm seeing snow. Come down off your superior mental high horse built on the Jesuits' mathematical space ball lives. In this video, P1, uh, if you don't know history, we become victims to that ignorance. I uh, go into the detail of how the total solar eclipses actually began with the prophet Jonah when he preached in Nineveh, and they all repented. And that is backed up by Ptolemy and how he determined 
18 years after he preached, that was when they had started writing it all down because it was a big mystery to them. All the wise men, the ancient Chaldean astronomers, had no idea of that. And the assertion is that uh, that's what Jonah is a prophet of, the solar eclipse. So I go through the history of that in this video. If you didn't see it, I recommend you go bone up on those facts. Because in my feed a few days ago, I saw this video. And I just, it shocked me. Look at this. Jonah, Texas, Nineveh, Texas, Rapture, Indiana. Nineveh, Indiana, Nineveh, Ohio, Nineveh, Pennsylvania, New York. Eight of them. Eight Ninevehs. Seven in America. And I, it just seems so ironic. I didn't even know there were seven, so I wanted to dig into it and find out if it was true before I brought it to you. And when I searched, sure enough, there are seven places named Nineveh in America. And then uh, I said Nineveh, Texas, and that's all I put in the search bar, and immediately fact check popped up. So anymore, I've, I've come to believe that's like a, a badge of truth every time you see one of these fact checks, but I wanted to delve into it just to see if there was any merit to it. And, of course, they claim that this uh, seven cities or eight places Actually, two of the eight were going to be in totality. Well, okay, if you're splitting hairs, you may be correct there. But anyhow, I just thought it interesting. The first place it goes over is Jonah before any of the Ninevehs. Funny. And then right up here in the X from the 2017, you've got this rapture. <laughs> it's just... Uh, Things that make you think. So anyhow, I decided to look into where this was at. Sure enough, this point here is where the first Nineveh is. And as you can see, it is outside the path of totality. So there is kind of some facts to the fact checkers. But allow me to go in a little deeper. Sorry about that. This is Jonah, Texas. And it's in totality. For two minutes and 51 seconds. Then we go to Nineveh, Texas, but it's not in totality. But it's damn close. It's as close as you can get without it. I wonder if these are Bailey's beads and balls and the diamond ring. That'll just, I would love to see someone take actual footage from Nineveh, Texas and upload it. Because, uh, the moon is only rough on this one limb, so Bailey's balls or beads, and it kind of rotates around this way. That ought to be very interesting to see what is observed because it's damn near 100%. Anyhow, stepping through here, I think uh, well, that's Ohio. Then you have... Pennsylvania, of course, that's not in totality either. But again, just like in Texas, pretty damn close. Then Nineveh, Ohio is in totality for 3 minutes 52 seconds. Rapture is in totality for 3 minutes 52 seconds. Nineveh, Indiana is in totality for 4 minutes. Yes, Nineveh, New York. 2 minutes, 26 second duration. But it's not totality. And Nova Scotia. You can see the little sliver that was available. But uh, interesting little factoid.